Red Dwarf is a British science fiction comedy franchise which primarily consists of a television sitcom that aired on BBC Two between 1988 and 1999, and on Dave since 2009, gaining a cult following. To date, 11 full series of the show plus one special miniseries have aired. The most recent series, Red Dwarf 12, started airing in October 2017. The series was created by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor. In addition to the television episodes, there are four novels, a radio version adapted from the audiobooks, two pilot episodes for an American version of the show, tie-in books, magazines and other merchandise. Set on the eponymous mining spaceship, the main characters are Dave Lister, initially the last known human alive, and Arnold Rimmer, a hologram of Lister's deceased bunkmate. The other's members of the crew are Cat, a life form which evolved from the descendants of Lister's pregnant pet cat Frankenstein, Holly, Red Dwarf's computer, Series 1v, 8 and briefly in the final episodes of 7, 12, Critten, a service mechanoid, Series 2 present, and Christine Kokansky, an alternative reality version of Lister's love interest, Series 7, 8. One of the series' highest accolades came in 1994, when an episode from the sixth series, Gunman of the Apocalypse, won an International Emmy Award in the Popular Arts category, and in the same year the series was also awarded Best BBC Comedy Series at the British Comedy Awards. The series attracted its highest ratings, of more than 8 million viewers, during the eighth series in 1999. The revived series on digital channel Dave has consistently delivered some of the highest ratings for non public service broadcasting commissions in the UK. The show has been critically acclaimed, and has a Metacritic score of 84 100s. Series 11 was voted Best Returning TV Sitcom and Comedy of the Year for 2016 by readers for the British Comedy Guide. Topic. Setting and plot The main setting of the series is the eponymous mining spaceship Red Dwarf. In the first episode, set sometime in the late 22nd century, an onboard radiation leak kills everyone except lowest ranking technician Dave Lister, who is in suspended animation at the time, and his pregnant cat, Frankenstein, who is safe in the cargo hold. Following the accident, the ship's computer Holly keeps Lister in stasis until the radiation levels return to normal, a process that takes three million years. Lister therefore emerges as the last human being in the universe, but not alone on board the ship. His former bunkmate and immediate superior Arnold Judas Rimmer a character plagued by failure is resurrected by Holly as a hologram to keep Lister sane. They are joined by a creature known only as Cat, the last member of a race of humanoid felines that evolved in the ship's hold from Lister's pregnant cat during the three million years that Lister was in stasis. The series revolves around Lister being the last human alive, three million years from Earth, with his companions initially Rimmer, Cat and Holly. The crew encounters phenomena such as time distortions, faster than light travel, mutant diseases and strange life forms all evolved from Earth, because the series has no aliens that had developed in the intervening millions of years. Though it has a science fiction setting, much of the humor comes from the interactions of the characters, particularly the laid-back Lister and the stuck-up Rimmer. In Series 3, the computer Holly changes from male Norman Lovett to female Hattie Hayridge, and the mechanoid Critten who had appeared in one episode in Series 2 joins the crew and becomes a regular character. In Series 6, a story arc is introduced where Red Dwarf has been stolen, and the crew pursues it in the smaller Starbug craft, with the side effect that the character Holly disappears. Series 7 is also set in Starbug. Early in Series 7, Rimmer departs due to actor Chris Barry's commitments and is replaced by Christine Kokansky, Lister's long-term love interest, from an alternate universe. Kokansky becomes a regular character for Series 7 and 8. At the end of Series 7, we learn that Critton's service nanobots, which had abandoned him years earlier, were behind the theft of the Red Dwarf at the end of Series 5. At the beginning of the eighth series, Critton's nanobots reconstruct the Red Dwarf, which they had broken down into its constituent atoms. As a consequence, Series 8 features the entire original crew of Red Dwarf resurrected, except for the already alive Lister and Kokansky, including a pre accident Rimmer, and the original male Holly. The series ends with a metal eating virus loose on Red Dwarf. The entire crew evacuates save the main cast Lister, Rimmer, Cat, Critton and Kokansky, whose fate is unresolved in a cliffhanger ending. Series 9 onwards revert to the same four main characters of Series 3 to 6 Lister, Rimmer, Cat and Critton, on Red Dwarf and without Kokansky or Holly, and Rimmer is again a hologram. 
It has not been confirmed whether the Rimmer on board ship is the one who originally left, the revived version, or a third incarnation entirely, however, episodes have alluded to him remembering events from both previous incarnations' lives. <laughs> <laughs> Characters and actors Dave Lister, played by Craig Charles, is a genial scouser and self-described bum. He was the lowest ranking of the 169 crew members on the ship before the accident. Lister survived the accident, as he was in stasis for smuggling an unquarantined cat on board. He has a long-standing desire to return to Earth and start a farm and or diner on Fiji which is under three feet of water following a volcanic eruption, but is left impossibly far away by the accident, which renders him the last known surviving member of the human race. He likes Indian food, especially chicken vindaloo, which is a recurring theme in the series. Arnold Judas Rimmer BSCSSC, Bronze Swimming Certificate, and Silver Swimming Certificate, played by Chris Barry, was the second lowest ranking member of the crew while they were all alive. He is a fussy, bureaucratic, neurotic coward who, by failing to replace a drive plate properly, is responsible for the Red Dwarf Cadmium II accident that kills the entire crew, including himself, except Lister. Nevertheless, Holly chose him to be the ship's one available hologram because he considered him the person most likely to keep Lister sane. During Series 7, Rimmer leaves the dimension shared by his crewmates to become the new Ace Rimmer. Along with the Red Dwarf ship and its crew, Rimmer is resurrected at the start of Series 8 by nanobots. He comes face to face with death at the end of the series, whom he kicks in the groin. From the Back to Earth specials onwards, he is once again a hologram, with no explanation as to whether he is the same hologram who left in Series 7, or what happened to the human Rimmer from Series 8. The Cat, played by Danny John Jules, is a humanoid creature who evolved from the offspring of Lister's smuggled pet cat Frankenstein. Cat is concerned with little other than sleeping, eating, and fawning over his appearance, and tends not to socialize with other members of the crew in early episodes. He becomes more influenced by his human companions over time, and begins to resemble a stylish, self-centered human. It is later revealed that, unlike his human companions, he has a cool sounding pulse, six nipples, and color-coordinated internal organs. Critton, full name Critton 2X4B523P, played by Robert Llewellyn from Series 3 onwards, and as a one-off appearance in Series 2 by David Ross, was rescued by the crew from the crashed spaceship Nova 5 in Series 2, upon which he had continued to serve the ship's crew despite their having been dead for thousands or even millions of years. Critton is a service mechanoid and when first encountered by the crew, he was bound by his behavioral protocols. But Lister gradually encouraged him to break his programming and think for himself. His change in appearance between the two actors is explained away by an accident involving Lister's space bike and Lister having to repair him. Holly, played by Norman Lovett in Series 1, 2, 8, and a guest appearance in each of Series 7 and 12, and Hattie Hayridge in Series 3 to V, is the ship's computer. Holly has a functional IQ of 6,000, although this is severely depleted by the 3 million years of runtime and lack of repairs. Holly is left alone after the radiation accident that kills Rimmer and the rest of the crew except for Lister and the cat. The computer had developed computer senility before the radiation accident, rendering it functionally inert. The change in appearance for Series 3 is explained by Holly having changed his face to resemble that of a computer from a parallel universe, with whom he'd once fallen madly in love. Christine Kokansky, originally portrayed by Claire Grogan before Chloe Annette took on the role from Series 7, was initially a Red Dwarf navigation officer whom Lister had a crush on, later retroactively altered to be his ex-girlfriend, and whose memory he had cherished ever since. In one episode, the crew happens upon an alternative dimension where Kokansky survived the Red Dwarf Cadmium II accident. She joins Lister and the crew after the link to her own dimension collapses. By the first episode of the Red Dwarf, Back to Earth specials, Lister believes her dead, but it is later revealed that Critton, the sole witness to her death, had lied to Lister. Kokansky had instead fled the ship in a blue midget when it became clear Lister's complete lack of self-respect and indulgence on excesses was slowly killing him, which greatly depressed her. Lister is advised by fans of the television series to find her in the next series and to make amends. However, the character does not appear in any of the later series. Topic: Production. 
The first series aired on BBC Two in 1988. Twelve series have so far been produced, with a thirteenth rumoured to be planned for 2019. Topic. Concept and commission The concept for the show was originally developed from the sketch series Dave Holland's, Space Cadet on the BBC Radio 4 show Son of Cliché in the mid-1980s, written by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor. Their influences came from films and television programs such as Star Trek 1966, Silent Running 1972, Alien 1979, Dark Star 1974, and The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 1981, but also had a large element of British-style comedy and satire thrown into the mix, ultimately molded into the form of a sitcom. Many visual and character elements bear similarities to the Trident nuclear submarine BBC documentary, Defense of the Realm. Having written the pilot script in 1983, the former Spitting Image writers pitched their unique concept to the BBC, but it was rejected on fears that a science fiction sitcom would not be popular. It was finally accepted by BBC North in 1986, a result of a spare budget being assigned for a second series of Happy Families that would never arise, and producer Paul Jackson's insistence that Red Dwarf should be filmed instead. The show was lucky to be remounted after an electrician strike partway through rehearsals in early 1987 shut the entire production down the title sequence was filmed in January 1987. The filming was rescheduled for September, and the pilot episode finally made it onto television screens on 15 February 1988. <laughs> Casting Alan Rickman and Alfred Molina auditioned for roles in the series, with Molina being cast as Rimmer. However, after Molina had difficulties with the concept of the series, and of his role in particular, the role was recast and filled by Chris Barry, a professional voice actor and impressionist who had previously worked with both the writers on Spitting Image, and with the producers on Happy Families and Jasper Carrot Productions. Craig Charles, a Liverpudlian, punk poet, was given the role of Dave Lister. He was approached by the production team for his opinion about the cat character, as they were concerned it may be considered by people as racist. Charles described cat as pretty cool, and after reading the script, he decided he wanted to audition for the part of Dave Lister. Laconic stand up comedian Norman Lovett, who had originally tried out for the role of Rimmer, was kept in the show as Holly, the senile computer of the titular ship. A professional dancer and singer, Danny John Jules, arriving half an hour late for his appointment, stood out as the cat immediately. This was partly due to his cool exterior, dedicated research, reading Desmond Morris' book Catwatching, and his showing up in character, wearing his father's 1950s style zoot suit. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Writing, producing, and directing. Grant and Naylor wrote the first six series together using the pseudonym Grant Naylor on the first two novels and later as the name of their production company, although never on the episodes themselves. Grant left in 1995, to pursue other projects, leaving Naylor to write series 7 and 8 with a group of new writers, including Paul Alexander and actor Robert Llewellyn who portrayed the character Critton. For the most part, Ed By produced and directed the series. He left before Series 5 due to a scheduling clash he ended up directing a show starring his wife, Ruby Wax, so Juliet May took over as director. May parted ways with the show halfway through the series for personal and professional reasons and Grant and Naylor took over direction of the series, in addition to writing and producing. Series 6 was directed by Andy de Emini, and Ed By returned to direct Series 7 and 8. Series 1, 2 and 3 were made by Paul Jackson Productions, with subsequent series produced by the writer's own company Grant Naylor Productions for BBC North. All eight series were broadcast on BBC Two. At the beginning of Series 4, production moved from BBC North's new broadcasting house in Manchester to Shepparton. <laughs> Theme song and music The theme tune and incidental music were written and performed by Howard Goodall, with the vocals on the closing theme tune by Jenna Russell. The first two series used a relatively somber instrumental version of the closing theme for the opening titles, from series three onwards this switched to a more upbeat version. Goodall also wrote music for the show's various songs, including, Tongue Tied, 
with lyrics written by Grant and Naylor. Danny John Jules credited as the Cat reorchestrated and released Tongue Tied. In October 1993, it reached number 17 on the UK charts. Goodall himself sang the Rimmer song, heard during the series 7 episode Blue, to which Chris Barry mimed. Topic: <laughs> Remastered. In 1998, on the 10th anniversary of the show's first airing and between the broadcast of Series 7 and 8, the first three series of Red Dwarf were remastered and released on VHS. The remastering included replacing model shots with computer graphics, cutting certain dialogue and scenes, refilming Norman Lovett's Holly footage, creating a consistent set of opening titles, replacing music and creating ambient sound effects with a digital master. The remastered series were released in a four-disc DVD box set. The Body Snatcher Collection, in 2007. Topic: <inaudible> Hiatus. Three years elapsed between series six and seven, partly due to the dissolving of the Grant and Naylor partnership, but also due to cast and crew working on other projects. When the series eventually returned, it was filmized and no longer shot in front of a live audience, allowing for greater use of four-walled sets, location shooting, and single-camera techniques. When the show returned for its eighth series two years later, it had dropped use of the filmizing process and returned to using a live audience. The show received a setback when the BBC rejected proposals for a series nine. Doug Naylor confirmed in 2007 that the BBC decided not to renew the series as they preferred to work on other projects. A short animated Christmas special was, however, made available to mobile phone subscribers the same year. Ultimately, however, fans had to wait a decade before the series returned to television. Topic Revival. Topic Red Dwarf: Back to Earth. In 2008, a three-episode production was commissioned by the digital channel Dave. Red Dwarf, Back to Earth was broadcast over the Easter weekend of 2009, along with a «making of» documentary. The episode was set nine years after the events of «Only the Good». With the cliffhanger ending of that episode left unresolved, a situation that would continue with series 10. The storyline involves the characters arriving back on Earth, circa 2009, only to find that they are characters in a TV show called, Red Dwarf. Kokansky is supposedly dead and Holly is offline due to water damage caused by Lister leaving a tap running. Actress Sophie Winkleman played a character called Katerina, a resurrected hologram of a Red Dwarf science officer intent on replacing Rimmer. To achieve a more cinematic atmosphere, Back to Earth was not filmed in front of a studio audience. Some previous Red Dwarf episodes had been shot in that way, body swap, and all of the seventh series, but Back to Earth represented the first time that a laughter track was not added before broadcast. It was also the first episode of Red Dwarf to be filmed in high definition. The specials were televised over three nights starting on Friday, 10 April 2009. The broadcasts received record ratings for Dave. The first of the three episodes represented the UK's highest ever viewing figures for a commissioned program on a digital network. Back to Earth was released on DVD on the 15th of June 2009 and on Blu-ray on the 31st of August 2009. Back to Earth was subsequently described on the series' official website as, for all intents and purposes, the ninth series of Red Dwarf. This placement was confirmed when Series 10 was commissioned and branded as the 10th series, although Back to Earth continues not to be referred to as Series 9 on home media or digital releases. Topic: <laughs> Red Dwarf X. On the 10th of April 2011, Dave announced it had commissioned a 6-episode Red Dwarf Series 10 to be broadcast on Dave in late 2012. Filming dates for the new series Red Dwarf X were announced on of November 2011, along with confirmation that the series would be shot at Shepperton Studios in front of an audience. Principal filming began on 16 December 2011 and ended on 27 January 2012, and the cast and crew subsequently returned for six days filming pickups. 
Discounting guest stars, only the core cast of Charles, Barry, Llewellyn and John Jules return for series 10, with Annette and Lovett absent, though the scripts include references to Kokansky and Holly. On 20 July 2012, a 55-second trailer for series 10 was released on Facebook, followed by a new teaser every Friday. The new series debuted on Thursday 4 October 2012. Red Dwarf 11 and 12 Following Series 10, which attracted high viewing figures, Dave, Doug Naylor and the cast showed strong interest in making another series. During the Dimension Jump fan convention in May 2013, Doug Naylor stated that discussions were ongoing with all involved parties and while arrangements had not been finalized, he hoped shooting could begin in February 2014. In October 2013, Robert Llewellyn posted on his blog, stating that an eleventh series would happen, and that it would be sometime in 2014. Llewellyn later removed the post from his blog, and Doug Naylor issued a statement on Twitter saying, "Getting tweets claiming Red Dwarf 11 is commissioned. Not true. Not yet." However, in January 2014, Danny John Jules stated that the eleventh series of Red Dwarf was in the process of being written. At the April 2014 Sci Fi Scarborough Festival, during the Red Dwarf cast panel, Danny John Jules stated that filming of the eleventh series would commence in October 2014, with an expected release of Autumn 2015 on Dave. On 2 May 2015, at the Dimension Jump 18 convention, Naylor announced that an eleventh and a twelfth series had been commissioned. The two series would be shot back to back towards the end of 2015 for broadcast on Dave in 2016 and 2017 respectively, and would be co-produced by Baby Cow Productions, with company CEO, Henry Normal, executive producing the new episodes. Series 11 and 12 were filmed back to back at Pinewood Studios between November 2015 and March 2016. The 11th series premiered on UK TV's video on demand service UK TV Play on the 15th of September 2016, a week ahead of its broadcast transmission on the 22nd of September. On the 8th of September 2017, it was announced that Red Dwarf 12 would begin broadcasting on Dave on the 12th of October 2017, and on the 15th of September 2017 it was further announced that each episode would preview a week earlier via the UK TV Play video on demand service, effectively meaning that series 12 would be starting on the 5th of October 2017. Topic: Red Dwarf 13 on 28 April 2018 at ThamesCon, Danny John Jules and Robert Llewellyn stated that a 13th series would be made in 2019. It is once again expected to be produced for and shown on the channel Dave, although this is yet to be confirmed. <laughs> Themes Red Dwarf was founded on the standard sitcom focus of a disparate and frequently dysfunctional group of individuals living together in a restricted setting. With the main characters routinely displaying their cowardice, incompetence and laziness, while exchanging insulting and sarcastic dialogue, the series provided a humorous antidote to the fearless and morally upright space explorers typically found in science fiction series, with its main characters acting bravely only when there was no other possible alternative. The increasing science fiction elements of the series were treated seriously by creators Rob Grant and Doug Naylor. Satire, parody and drama were alternately woven into the episodes, referencing other television series, films and books. These have included references to the likes of 2001, A Space Odyssey 1968, Top Gun 1986, Robocop 1987, Star Wars 1977, Citizen Kane 1942, The Wild One 1953, High Noon 1952, Rebel Without a Cause 1955, Casablanca 1942, Easy Rider 1969, The Terminator 1984, Pride and Prejudice 1813, Isaac Asimov's Robot Series 1939 to 1985 and Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The writers based the whole theme of some episodes on the plots of feature films. The series three episode, Polymorph, references and parodies key moments from Alien 1979, from series four, Camille, echoes key scenes from Casablanca 1942, while Meltdown borrows the main plot from Westworld 1973. For series nine, Back to Earth was partially inspired by Blade Runner 1982. 
The series themes are not limited to films or television, having also incorporated historical events and figures. Religion also plays a part in the series, as a significant factor in the ultimate fate of the cat race, and the perception of Lister as their god, both within the episode, Waiting for God, whose title makes a literary reference to the Samuel Beckett play Waiting for God, as well as the crew meeting a man they believe to be Jesus Christ in series 10 episode, Lemons. The series 7 episode titled, Ouroboros, derives its name and theme from the ancient mythological snake by the same name. The third episode of series 6 Gunmen of the Apocalypse was based to Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The series explores many science fiction staples such as time travel paradoxes including the grandfather paradox, the question of determinism and free will on several episodes, the pursuit of happiness in virtual reality and, crucially to the show's premise of Lister being the last human, the near certainty of the human species extinction some time in the far future. Aliens do not feature in the series, as Grant and Naylor decided very early in the process that they did not want aliens involved. This is usually addressed with Rimmer's belief in extraterrestrial life being shot down, such as a vessel he believes to be an alien ship turning out to be a garbage pod. However, there are non-human life forms such as evolutions of Earth species e.g. the cat race, robotic or holo life forms created by humans, and a kind of genetically engineered life form GELF, an artificially created creature. Simulants and GELFs frequently serve as antagonists among the later series of the show. Topic. Hallmarks The series developed its own distinct vocabulary. Words and phrases such as hologrammatic sick, dollar pound, fellas sapiens, simulants, GELF, space weevil, and zero-g football appear throughout the series, highlighting a development in language, political climate, technology, evolution, and culture in the future. The creators also employed a vocabulary of fictional expletives in order to avoid using potentially offensive words in the show, and to give nuance to futuristic colloquial language, in particular, smeg, and variants such as smegging, smegger, and smeghead, features prominently, alongside the terms gimboid and goit. Episodes <laughs> <laughs> Topic Ratings Topic Red Dwarf Eight Topic Back to Earth Topic Red Dwarf X Topic Red Dwarf Eleven Topic Red Dwarf Twelve Topic Reception and Achievements Topic Critical Reactions The changes that were made to the series cast, setting, creative teams and even production values from series to series have meant that opinions differ greatly between fans and critics as to the quality of certain series. In the Great Red Dwarf Debate, published in Volume 2 Issue 3 of the Red Dwarfs magazine, science fiction writers Steve Lyons and Joe Nazaro both argued on the pros and cons of the early series against the later series. Lyons stated that what the show once had was a unique balance of sci-fi comedy, which worked magnificently." Nazaro agreed that, "...the first two series are very original and very funny," but went on to say that, "...it wasn't until series three that the show hit its stride." Series six is regarded as a continuation of the, "...monster of the week," philosophy of series five, which was nevertheless considered to be visually impressive. 
Discussions revolve around the quality of Series 6, seen by one reviewer as just as good as the earlier series, but has been criticized by another reviewer as a descent into formulaic comedy with an unwelcome change of setting. The changes seen in Series 7 were seen by some as a disappointment. While much slicker and higher budget in appearance, the shift away from outright sitcom and into something approaching comedy drama was seen by one reviewer as a move in the wrong direction. Furthermore, the attempt to shift back into traditional sitcom format for Series 8 was greeted with a response that was similarly lukewarm. There was criticism aimed at the decision to resurrect the entire crew of Red Dwarf, as it was felt this detracted from the series' central premise of Lister being the last human being alive. There are other critics who feel that Series 7 and 8 are no weaker than the earlier series, however, and the topic is the subject of constant fervent debate among the show's fanbase. Topic. Achievements Although the pilot episode of the show gathered over 4 million viewers, viewing figures dipped in successive episodes and the first series had generally poor ratings. Through to Series 6 the ratings had steadily increased and peaked at over 6 million viewers, achieved with the episode, Gunman of the Apocalypse. When the series returned in 1999 it gained the highest audience figures yet, over 8 million viewers tuned in for Series 8's opening episode. Back in the Red, Part 1. The series has won numerous awards including the Royal Television Society Award for Special Effects, the British Science Fiction Award for Best Dramatic Presentation, as well as an International Emmy Award for Series 6 episode, Gunman of the Apocalypse, which tied with an absolutely fabulous episode, Hospital, in the popular arts category. The show had also been nominated for the International Emmy Award in 1987, 1989, and 1992. Series 6 won a British Comedy Award for Best BBC Comedy Series. The video sales have won eight gold awards from the British Video Association, and the series still holds the record for being BBC Two's longest-running, highest-rated sitcom. In 2007 the series was voted Best Sci-Fi Show of All Time by the readers of Radio Times magazine. Editor Jill Hudson stated that this result had surprised them as the series had not given any new episodes this century. In January 2017, Series 11 was voted Best Returning TV Sitcom and Comedy of the Year for 2016 by readers for the British Comedy Guide. A year later Red Dwarf once again was voted Best Returning TV Sitcom for Series 12 retaining the title from British Comedy Guide. Topic: <laughs> Spin-offs and merchandise. The show's logo and characters have appeared on a wide range of merchandise. Red Dwarf has also been spun off in a variety of different media formats. For instance, the song, Tongue Tied, featured in the Parallel Universe episode of the show, was released in 1993 as a single and became a top 20 UK hit for Danny John Jules under the name The Cat. Stage plays of the show have been produced through Black Yak, a theatre group in Perth, Western Australia, who were given permission by Grant Naylor Productions to mount stage versions of certain episodes in 2002, 2004, and 2006. In October 2006 an interactive quiz DVD entitled Red Dwarf, Beat the Geek was released, hosted by Norman Lovett and Hattie Hayridge, both reprising their roles as Holly. In 2005, Grant Naylor Productions and Across the Pond Comics collaborated to produce the spin-off webcomic Red Dwarf, Prelude to Nanaki. <laughs> Novels Working together under the name, Grant Naylor, the creators of the series collaboratively wrote two novels. The first, Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers, was published in November 1989, and incorporates plot lines from several episodes of the show's first two series. The second novel, Better Than Life, followed in October 1990, and is largely based on the second series episode of the same name. Together, the two novels provide expanded backstory and development of the series' principal characters and themes. The authors began work on a sequel to Better Than Life, called The Last Human, but Rob Grant was drawn away from Red Dwarf by an interest in other projects. Still owing Penguin Publishing two more Red Dwarf novels, Grant and Naylor decided to each write an alternative sequel to Better Than Life. Two completely different sequels were made as a result, each presenting a possible version of the story's continuation. 
Last Human, by Doug Naylor, adds Kokansky to the crew and places more emphasis on the science fiction and plot elements, while Rob Grant's novel Backwards, is more in keeping with the previous two novels, and borrows more extensively from established television stories. An omnibus edition of the first two novels was released in 1992, including edits to the original text and extra material such as the original pilot script of the TV series. All four novels have been released in audiobook format, the first two read by Chris Barry, Last Human read by Craig Charles, and Backwards read by author Rob Grant. In December 2009, Infinity Welcome's Careful Drivers was released in Germany with the title Rotter Z Word Red Dwarf in German. Topic. List of Red Dwarf novels Topic. Home video releases For the initial release of the VHS editions, episodes of Red Dwarf were separated and two volumes released for each series except series 7 and 8, which were released on three separate tapes, labeled Byte 1 and Byte 2 plus Byte 3 for series 7 and 8. These videos were named after the first episode of the three presented on the tape, as was typical with other BBC video releases at the time. However, on occasions the BBC decided to ignore the original running order and use the most popular episodes from the series to maximize sales of the videos. For series 3, the first ever release, Body Swap and Time Slides were swapped round so that the latter could receive top billing on the second VHS volume. For the second VHS volume of series 1, Confidence and Paranoia was given top billing even though the original broadcast order was retained. This was due to the leading episode being Waiting for God, which shared its name with the title of another comedy series set in a retirement home, and for series 5, Back to Reality and Quarantine were given top billing on their respective video release, which completely reorganized the order of episodes from that in which they were originally broadcast. Future releases would increasingly observe authenticity with the original broadcast context. All eight series were made available on VHS, and three episodes of Series 7 were also released as special, extended, sick versions with extra scenes including an original, unbroadcast ending for the episode, Tika to Ride, and No Laugh Track. The remastered versions of Series 1-3 were also released individually and in a complete box set. Finally, two outtake videos were released, both hosted by Robert Llewellyn in character as Critton, Smeg Ups in 1994, and its sequel, Smeg Outs, in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> DVD releases the first eight series have since been released on DVD in Region 1, 2, and 4, each with a bonus disc of extra material and each release from Series 3 onwards being accompanied by an original documentary about the making of each respective series. Regions 2 and 4 have also seen the release of two Just the Shows, Digipack box sets containing the episodes from Series 1 IV Volume 1 and V8 Volume 2 with static menus and no extras. Red Dwarf, the Body Snatcher Collection, containing the 1998 remastered episodes, as well as new documentaries for Series 1 and 2, was released in 2007. This release showcased a storyboard construction of Body Snatcher, an unfinished script from 1987, which was finally completed in 2007 by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor who were working together for the first time since 1993. In December 2008 an anniversary DVD set entitled Red Dwarf, all the shows was released, reworking the vanilla disc content of the two Just the Shows sets within A4 packaging resembling a photo album, which carefully omitted information that no extras were included. This box set was re-released in a smaller slip case sized box, reverting to the Just the Shows title, in November 2009. The series is also available for download on iTunes. Blu-ray releases In 2016, BBC Worldwide began creating an up version of the first five series for release on Blu-ray, due to demand from Japan. When asked about the project in 2017, Doug Naylor confirmed he had stopped it due to lackluster picture quality. By 2018, the project, now encompassing the entire original run, had been restarted, and a Series 1-8 Blu-ray set release was confirmed in August. Topic. Magazine 
The Red Dwarf magazine, the magazine part of the title changed to Smegazine from issue 3 was launched in 1992 by Fleetway Editions. It comprised a mix of news, reviews, interviews, comic strips, and competitions. The comic strips featured episode adaptations and original material, including further stories of popular characters like Mr. Flibble, the Polymorph, and Ace Rimmer. Notably, the comic strip stories' holographic characters, predominantly Rimmer, were drawn in grayscale. This was at the request of Grant and Naylor, who had wanted to use the technique for the television series, but the process was deemed too expensive to produce. Despite achieving circulation figures of over 40,000 per month, the magazine's publisher decided to close the title down to concentrate on their other publications. A farewell issue was published, cover dated January 1994, and featured the remaining interviews, features, and comic strips that were to feature in the following issues. The official Red Dwarf fan club produces a periodical magazine for members titled Back to Reality. The previous volume of this magazine, dating back to the 1990s, was known as Better Than Life. U.S. version Despite the original version having been broadcast on PBS, a pilot episode for an American version known as Red Dwarf USA was produced through Universal Studios with the intention of broadcasting on NBC in 1992. The show essentially followed the same story as the first episode of the original series, using American actors for most of the main roles, Craig Bierko as Lister, Chris Eigerman as Rimmer, and Hinton Battle as Cat. Exceptions to this were Llewellyn, who reprised his role as Critton, and the British actress Jane Leaves, who played Holly. It was written by Linwood Boomer and directed by Jeffrey Melman, with Grant and Naylor on board as creators and executive producers. Llewellyn, Grant and Naylor travelled to America for the filming of the American pilot after production of the fifth series of the UK series. According to Llewellyn and Naylor, the cast were not satisfied with Linwood Boomer's script. Grant and Naylor rewrote the script, but although the cast preferred the rewrite, the script as filmed was closer to Boomer's version. The pilot episode includes footage from the UK series in its title sequence, although it did not retain the logo or the theme music of the UK series. During filming of the pilot, the audience reaction was good and it was felt that the story had been well received. The studio executives were not entirely happy with the pilot, especially the casting, but decided to give the project another chance with Grant and Naylor in charge. The intention was to shoot a promo video for the show in a small studio described by the writers as a garage. New cast members were hired for the roles of Cat, now depicted as female, and Rimmer, Terry Farrell, and Anthony Fusco, respectively. This meant that, unlike the original British series, the cast was all Caucasian, which Charles referred to as White Dwarf. Chris Barry was asked to play Rimmer in the second pilot, but he declined. With a small budget and deadline, new scenes were quickly shot and mixed in with existing footage of the pilot and UK series five episodes, to give an idea of the basic plot and character dynamics, alongside proposed future episodes, remakes of episodes from the original show. Llewellyn did not participate in the reshoot, though clips from the British version were used to show the character. Despite the reshoots and recasting, the option on the pilot was not picked up. Farrell found work almost immediately afterwards with Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, in which she was cast as Jadzia Dax. Similarly, one year later Jane Leaves was cast in Frasier as Daphne Moon. The cast of both the British and American versions criticized the casting of Red Dwarf USA, particularly the part of Lister, who is portrayed in the British version as a likable slob, but in the US version as somewhat clean-cut. In the 2004 documentary Dwarfing USA, Danny John Jules said the only actor who could have successfully portrayed an American lister was John Belushi. In a 2009 interview on Kevin Pollack's chat show, Bierko said that casting him as lister was a huge mistake, and also said a John Belushi type would have been better suited to the role. The American pilot has been heavily bootlegged, but it has never been broadcast on TV in any country. Excerpts from the first pilot are included in Dwarfing USA, a featurette on the making of the pilots included on the DVD release of Red Dwarf's fifth series. Because of rights clearance issues, no footage from the second pilot is included in the featurette. <laughs> Red Dwarf, the movie Since the end of the eighth series in 1999, Doug Naylor has been attempting to make a feature-length version of the show. 
A final draft of the script was written, by Naylor, and flyers began circulating around certain websites. The flyer was genuine and had been distributed by Winchester Films to market the film overseas. Plot details were included as part of the teaser. It was set in the distant future where Homo sapienoids, a race of cyborgs, had taken over the solar system and were wiping out the human race. Spaceships that tried to escape Earth were hunted down until only one remained. Red Dwarf, Naylor had scouted Australia to get an idea of locations and finance costs, with pre-production beginning in 2004 and filming planned for 2005. Costumes were made, including Crittons, and a list celebrity cameos, including Madonna, were announced. However, finding sufficient funding has been difficult. Naylor explained at a Red Dwarf Dimension Jump convention that the film had been rejected by the BBC and the British Film Council. Reasons given for the rejections were that while the script was considered to be funny, it was not ready. In 2012, material from early drafts of the film was incorporated into the series 10 finale, The Beginning. In 2018, Naylor suggested production of the movie was still under consideration. The order will probably be another TV series, a stage show, and possibly a movie, and I think the guys agree on that. The film is a long shot at this point just because it can take so long to get funding. Topic. Role playing game Deep 7 Press formerly Deep 7 LLC released Red Dwarf, the role playing game in February 2003, although the printed copyright is 2002. Based on the series, the game allows its players to portray original characters within the Red Dwarf universe. Player characters can be human survivors, holograms, evolved. House pets, cats, dogs, iguanas, rabbits, rats, and mice, various types of mechanoid, series 4000, Hutters N10 and Wax Droids in the core book, series 3000 in the Extra Bits book, or GELFs, Kanadawawi and Pleasure GELF in the core book, Vindaluvians, in the Extra Bits book. A total of three products were released for the game, the core 176-page rulebook, the AI screen analogous to the game master's screen used in other role-playing games, also featuring the Extra Bits Book booklet, and the series sourcebook. The series sourcebook contains plot summaries of each episode from series 1-8 as well as game rules for all major and minor characters from each series. The game has been praised for staying true to the comedic nature of the series, for its entertaining writing, and for the detail to which the background material is explained. However, some reviewers found the game mechanics to be simplistic and uninspiring compared to other science fiction role-playing games on the market. Topic. Red Dwarf Night On 14 February 1998, the night before the 10th anniversary of the show's pilot episode broadcast, BBC Two devoted an evening of programs to the series, under the banner of Red Dwarf Night. The evening consisted of a mixture of new and existing material, and was introduced and linked by actor and fan Patrick Stewart. In addition, a series of special take-offs on BBC Two's idents, featuring the two Logo falling in love with a scudder, were used. The night began with Can't Smeg, Won't Smeg, a spoof of the cookery program Can't Cook, Won't Cook, presented by that show's host Ainsley Harriet who had himself appeared as a GELF in the series 6 episode, A Mohawk, Polymorph 2. Taking place outside the continuity of the series, two teams, Critton and Lister vs. Rimmer and Cat, although Cat quickly departs to be replaced by alter ego Dwayne Dibbley, were challenged to make the best chicken vindaloo. After a compilation bloopers show, featuring outtakes, the next program was Universe Challenge, a spoof of University Challenge. Hosted by original University Challenge presenter Bamba Gascoigne, the show had a team of knowledgeable dwarf fans compete against a team consisting of Chris Barry, Craig Charles, Robert Llewellyn, Chloe Annette, and Danny John Jules. This was followed by the Red Dwarf A to Z, a half-hour documentary that chose a different aspect of the show to focus on for each letter of the alphabet. Talking heads on the episode included Stephen Hawking, Terry Pratchett, original producer Paul Jackson, Mr. Blobby, Patrick Stewart, and a Dalek. Finally, the night ended with a showing of the episode, Gunman of the Apocalypse. <laughs> Dave Holland's, Space Cadet 
Red Dwarf was originally based on Dave Holland's Space Cadet, a series of five sketches that aired in the BBC Radio 4 series Son of Cliché, produced by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor in 1984. The sketches recounted the adventures of Dave Holland's voiced by Nick Wilton, a hapless space traveler who is marooned in space far from Earth. His only steady companion is the computer Hab, voiced by Chris Barry. Grant and Naylor chose to use the Dave Holland's Space Cadet sketches as a base for a television show after watching the 1974 film Dark Star. They changed some elements from the sketches. The seven trillion year figure was first changed to seven billion years and then to three million, and the characters of Arnold Rimmer and the cat were created. The name Dave Holland's was changed to Dave Lister when a football player called Dave Holland's became well known, and Hab was replaced by Holly. One of the voice actors from Son of Cliché, Chris Barry went on to portray Arnold Rimmer in the Red Dwarf TV series. Episodes of Dave Holland's can be found on the two-disc Red Dwarf DVD set starting with Series 5 and ending with Series 8. See also Red Dwarf Portal British sitcom List of science fiction sitcoms List of television series that include time travel <laughs>